Hi everyone, this is Francis McInerney of North River Ventures. I've been future-proofing companies now for about 38 years, and I'm going to give you a quick seminar here on the future of Apple that I know you have not thought of, and it's enlightening. I want all of you to consider mapping yourselves onto just two slides, only two, and you'll quickly see uh, just how well you do, or most of you do not fit on this really powerful future creator architecture. All you need to know about Apple in just two slides. Here's the first one. Apple, about 10 years ago, created a really simple elementary structure, an iCloud, then called iTunes, uh, layered onto a Wi-Fi architecture, which it is one of the world's leading developers. And onto this two-part architecture, it began to layer a whole series of products in increasingly larger markets, as you can see in a virtuous circle reading clockwise, from computers to laptops to tablets to phones and on to cars and healthcare, each of the markets this architecture opened is an order of magnitude larger than the preceding one. This is a powerful, powerful engine of market development. We used this chart several years ago to predict that Apple would go into cars and healthcare. And six years later, as you all know by now, in early 2014, Apple did just that. So. This chart has proven uh, very powerful for us, and it's a very simple way of showing what Apple will uh, do. The most important thing for you is to ask yourselves how many of you map onto this chart. Uh, bluntly, most of you don't, and got a lot of work to do to make sure that you can catch up with something like this. Some companies are computer-centric, tablet-centric, phone-centric, TV-centric, car-centric, healthcare-centric. None of them really understand this all-embracing architecture and how it will work to generate large amounts of profitable sales into well into the future. Now, you look at something like this and you say, okay, you know, I understand Sony doesn't fit. I can see clearly how Nokia didn't fit. It was too phone centric. I can see how Samsung definitely doesn't fit. It's, a, it's a, basically a Google slave. Um, but there is another question, which is, does Google fit? And the answer is, no, it doesn't. Now, uh, that, uh, raises some big questions. I want you to look at this because there's a logic here in this chart which is not immediately obvious, and it's this. That is, Apple today ports a lot of content into any one of these sectors through its iTunes operation, but there is nothing whatever preventing it from switching from uh, third-party apps to content on its own account on a massive scale. Uh, Apple can port all and any content that it wishes through a proprietary structure into any of these markets, as you can see, they're increasingly large. And this gives Apple a potent, potent space in the future that none of its competitors have. Again, map yourself onto this. You'll find that you really don't have all the pieces you need. You've got a lot of questions to answer and a lot of work to do. Uh, but if you think this is all there is to Apple, it's not by a very, very long shot. The core of Apple's scalability is something quite different yet again. It's on this slide. I want you to look at these data really closely because I know how few of you can come even close to this. You can see here from 1998 when Jobs returned to 2013 that he and Tim Cook built a company that grew 29 times in sales, operating profits up 185 times, all while keeping inventory days, no higher than six during the entire period. In fact, for most of this time, it's been around two or four days of sales and inventory. Now you try growing that far, that fast, in that many markets, opening up retail stores and everything else, keeping an inventory line like this. Next, look at the receivables line. It's coming down steadily from about 60 days to the 20 to 25 day range where it sits today. This kind of working capital flexibility is something that very few other companies have and has given Apple the opportunity to scale quickly and fast. Uh, you map these two. The, previous slides with this one, and you get a future creating engine that is unprecedented. Now, uh, as I said, I've been future proofing companies since 1976. This is just one example here we have of what to look for, how to act, and what to do. Um, you're going to have a lot of questions. You're going to have a lot of issues that you face in getting this done. My email is here. Contact me, um, and I will be back soon with another one in my series of future creating seminars. And you will see who's winning, who's losing, what to do, and what not to do. Thank you very much.